if there's no curiosity built up to what am I gonna get, and it doesn't look like the most interesting, the next level, the best way to network and connect, the most fun I'm gonna have, then your marketing campaign isn't gonna work. How do you increase the attendance for an event? So what a lot of event marketing really lacks is key insight into who you're targeting for the event and why they should care. It is a lot of effort and it's a lot of hard work to get people to get out of their daily routines, leave work for the day or leave work early or to travel to come out to your event. So your event, it better be intriguing, dynamic, uh, interesting. If there's no curiosity built up to what am I gonna get and it doesn't look like the most interesting, the next level, the best way to network and connect, the most fun I'm gonna have. If you don't have those things, then your marketing campaign isn't gonna work. A lot of times people blame the ads, but more than anything, it's the value proposition. There are a lot of us who are tired at the end of the day because we've been going so hard and so strong that we don't wanna go. So what is that value prop? What is it that you're making? What does it say about me if I attend? You know, the reason that, that music festivals are blowing up is because music festivals are the backdrop to amazing social media profiles, to be seen being seen, to be at the cool place or at, at the conversation or at the table or in the room or whatever it is. And so you have to think in terms of what is it that the attendee really wants and how can I start to build something around that? What kind of person will they be for, for having attended? And then you need to take all of those things and just completely soak, wrap, uh, immerse everything you say, all of your messaging, all of the feeling, all of the tone, your, from everything you're doing on a marketing side to make people believe and feel those things will be promised upon, right? That, that you understand what they really want. You understand what the promise is and you understand what it means to be represented there. And once you've done that, then it comes down to like putting on pressure, ensuring they understand there's a deadline, building a sense of urgency, maybe limiting seats and then by popular demand, opening up seats, ensuring you're showing social proof so other people see that, it, that there's, there's a reason to believe it, um, maybe being able to do offer codes or discount codes with flash sales. Like there's lots of selling tactics that you can use within your campaign. You have to really think about the value prop, the essence, the core element that makes your event unique and worth attending. What does a client want to see in a marketing agency's report? Oh, so this is huge. I think that a lot of marketing agencies do a really, really bad job at actually providing reports for their clients. You need to focus on five things. People at the end of the day really care about first, what is working? Be honest with me. Tell me what is working and why. Second, what's not working? Right? There's, there's room to admit that some things aren't working and we're gonna redirect these things elsewhere or that they're not working and why they're not working but, but why we might fix them. Third, what have you done for me? All right, so I'm coming at this from the client. Client aid to agency. Agency, you tell me what's working. You tell me what's not working. You tell me what you've done for me. What have you done for me the last month? What were you thinking? What are you feeling? What curiosities did you have? What questions did you ask that you pursued? The next, what are you going to do for me, right? If this is a monthly or quarterly report, even if it's an annual report, if you're in finance, it doesn't really matter where you are. Think about this from a financial uh, investment point of view, right? What's working in my financial portfolio? What's not working? What strategies are you gonna take? This is really interesting stuff to people. And then lastly, what was the value for money? I gave you this much money, what did I get in return? And so if you focus on those five things, you're gonna be in more of a position of, of transparency, honesty, and partnership because you are focusing on what matters most to them. What's working, what's not working, what have you done for me, what are you gonna do for me, what was my value for money? How much debt is okay? I don't you know. How do you know that? I mean, the answer is to be leveraged enough to be able to ensure that money is working for you and being used for you, but not not to be so leveraged that uh, a decision becomes catastrophic for you know a 10 or 20 or 30 year period for you. And it depends on your age. If you're younger, then you have more recovery time to kind of put the whole pot in and be able to take a big risk or a big gamble, and then you have years after that to be able to recover from it. But if you're older in life, people get a lot more hesitant because your window for recovery is so much shorter. Uh, but if you're older in life, you should have more assets that you can be able to leverage 
to be able to borrow against. So I don't know. It depends on your unique situation, ultimately. Uh, the answer is right for you based on your risk tolerance, the industry you're in, uh, what you have to leverage, um, your your potential runway for recovery, and then what you're comfortable with, like all of those things. What is a good CPM for social media? That's an interesting question because what you're basically, the only reason that you would be asking for it is to ensure that you're not underspending or overspending in your campaign. But here's the thing with your CPM. It's channel dependent, geography dependent, target dependent, uh, what you're selling, and what your competition is doing in market and time of year. All of those things will affect your ad pricing. Uh, let's say you're targeting young men on Facebook because you, first of all, there's fewer young men on Facebook. They're just not there. But if you're targeting them because you know that in your industry, those people will convert and those people will buy. And if all of your competition know that in your industry, those people are there because they convert and buy, your cost for placement, because it's an open marketplace, is gonna be much, much higher. And then you have to question whether it's worth it or not. If you're in, in targeting in 45-year-old females on Facebook, and you're just trying to do just high level awareness and you're kind of open geography and you're kind of loose on, on who you're targeting and your competition just isn't there, your costs are gonna be much, much lower because it's a supply and demand issue. The reason to be asking that question is because you wanna know that you're not over or under spending. You wanna be able to have comparable data, great but now you need to be able to find and research comparable data in that marketplace. And the best way to get that data is to start and launch a campaign. To be in market, to serve the same market for the same vertical with the same targets, to be able to get that predictable data and learn from it, or start a small pilot campaign and to test in market, and then to be able to right size it and then optimize and test and optimize and test and optimize and test. If you can't find the data because it doesn't exist, you can't ask someone who's doing it because they won't give it to you, then go to market, test really small and learn the information that you need before you blow it up. What is a good CPM for social media? I don't know. That is such a bizarre question. If growing and scaling your business by being better at sales and better at marketing, better at customer experience is important to you, be sure to check out this video right over here. And like always, subscribe to my channel, click on the bell icon, and get each video every day when it drops.